body may be detected for many years. We interviewed Dr. Kua Tasaka, who has conducted research on hazardous substances in the environment. Pesticides make a long journey and still now remain in human bodies. In the past, our bodies have never been exposed to artificial chemical substances, such as the bound substance of carbon and chlorine. Since 1939, and in Japan since 1945, these substances have emerged in the environment and entered human bodies from the food chain. We lack the ability to detect such poisonous substances when they enter our bodies, so our bodies store them with deposits of fat, since they have similar characteristics to fat. That's why hazardous substances come out in breast milk. Breast milk is the most important thing for the newborn babies of the next generation. And the news that such important nutrients had been contaminated was a great shock to the citizens of Japan. A series of shocking facts led to stronger regulations. In the year 1971, the agriculture law was revised and the use of pesticides such as DDT and BHC was banned. Two register pesticides, tests for chronic toxication and teratogenesis potency, the latter test checking for any long-term effects on descendants, became mandatory. Also, pesticide residue standards for specific pesticides and produce was set up. Further, pesticides causing contamination of the earth and water were controlled by regulations. In this way, production of Polydor, PCP and organomercury pesticides was eventually suspended. Keisuke Suzuki worked on the inspection of pesticides for many years. The best point about the new regulations was that they banned the use of pesticides with acute toxicities or those which remained in the environment for a long time. There had been regulations in the past, but they were not comprehensive. The priority was still on increasing food production. One problem was that there was no alternative pesticide that worked as well as the former pesticides. However, in 1971, awareness towards safety issues throughout society became very high. That's why all the concerned parties, including manufacturers, set about tackling the challenge of producing new chemicals. The administration of pesticides has changed drastically by putting the priority on safety. Meanwhile, citizens' groups have monitored the administration of pesticides and worked to strengthen the existing regulations. Pesticides are shrouded in secrecy, and there has been no disclosure of information. Neither the farmers nor the public knew which pesticides were no longer licensed. You have to ask the Ministry of Agriculture to submit the list of invalid pesticides to find out which pesticides are still okay to use. Besides that, nobody tells you why these specific pesticides are no longer licensed. That's the situation. Any accidents which occurred were heavily reported by the media. As a result, ordinary people tended to become a little too nervous. Even over tiny amounts of pesticide residue, consumers and those who were against the use of pesticides demanded the disclosure of the toxicities test. But we did not comply. I think that was probably because the administration was afraid of the public overreacting. It was not until the middle of 1990 when data regarding pesticide residue was made available to the public. Even after the revision of the law, cases of pesticide poisoning still occurred. According to the data of Saku Central Hospital, one in four farmers who used pesticides complained about health problems of some sort. 
Shigeki Ogino, a fifth-generation farmer, grows tea and raises pigs in the suburbs of Tokyo. He lost his father in a pesticide-related accident. His father was almost entirely covered in pesticides, became unconscious, then eventually passed away. We sprayed pesticides like crazy till my father passed away. The only thing we thought about was how to spread pesticides effectively. So I just wore short sleeve shirts without ever really thinking about the dangers involved with using pesticides. People in a village watch each other. In those days, people were judged by how hard they worked and how clean and weed-free their fields were. So they boasted to each other about how frequently they sprayed pesticides over their fields each day. They competed with each other. This was how it was in our community. Life was dominated by old ethics. In the end, they got tired of the competition and some of them became sick. Farmers refused to acknowledge the danger of pesticides. Of course, they had their suspicions, but first they had to grow produce and ship it to market. If they didn't do that, they didn't make any money. They used pesticides, dimly aware of the dangers involved, but farmers are boxed into a corner like that. They don't really want to confront the problem. So they just say, I'm a bit tired. Maybe I sprayed too much pesticide today. I think I'd better not drink alcohol tonight. I'll just go to bed early. In reduced pesticide paddies, many natural predators, such as spiders, live. They eat harmful insects, so the upswing in pests is kept under control. Experiments show that the use of pesticides actually increases the number of pests. One reason for this is that pests build tolerance to pesticides and further, due to the use of pesticides, natural enemies of harmful insects decrease in number. As a result, farmers have to spray new pesticides repeatedly. In the past, the more pesticides we sprayed, the more pests kept coming back and browning the tips of the leaves. But even though I've now stopped using pesticides, there's not been much harm done. There are some pests, but not enough to cause much damage to the leaves. On the contrary, when we used pesticides, the number of pests increased enormously. So, there really is no need for pesticides. Taking a cue from his father's death, Mr. Ogino started farming organically without using any pesticides or chemical fertilizers. He makes liquid fertilizer out of pig excrement and sprinkles it over his tea fields, and he feeds the weeds that grow in his fields to his pigs. In this way, he operates recycle-oriented farming. All living things have now returned to his tea fields. Just like Ogino, farmers who have converted to organic farming have emerged. Takao Furuno, a farmer in Kyushu, has farmed organically for 30 years. His rice paddies became full of leaves. We've been weeding by hand for 10 years. We worked from 4 in the morning till 9 at night. We were always hard at work, but still, more and more weeds sprang up. As my friend often said, no chemical fertilizers, no pesticides equals no harvest. First, they could only grow vegetables full of wormholes and curved cucumbers. But with the use of organic manure, they could grow excellent vegetables. Before, we could only harvest a carrot this size. At the very beginning, this one was satisfactory. Now our carrots are like this. <laughs> Big difference, isn't it? Furuno eventually discovered hybrid duck farming with ducks released into the...